Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mayor Perry. Welcome to another episode of Death's Dope. So today I'm going to share with you guys like one of my best kept secrets. You know, sometimes producers and people, they like to hold little tips and tricks. And they have their little things, you know, they have their little secret sauce that they like to keep stashed away. But I'm of the belief that we're all unique, we're all different. So I'm going to give you guys like every little thing that I know as far as like my resources and, you know, all my little things that I do as far as my beats are concerned. Like nobody is me and I'm not nobody else. So you know, I don't feel like I have to hold anything. You know, I don't have to withhold any information. But today I'm gonna share with you guys one of the sites I go to. And you know, I don't know these people. I don't have any idea who runs this site. Just so you know, like, this is just something that I use. So I thought it would be cool to uh, share with you guys and also, you know, make a beat with something that I find on there. So the name of the site is dripcord.com dripcord.com i found is like especially like for trap stuff i feel like they just specialize in like trap loops for me it's like one of the dopest sites to go to when i'm just having a block and the kicker is it's like all free like i, I mean i think they have stuff that you can buy on there as well but I go through the free stuff and there has not been one time I went to the site to look for something to just kind of spark an idea because you know how it is as a producer sometimes you sit down you try to make something and sometimes it's hard to get things to flow so sometimes we need something to just kind of spark an idea and get us going and this site always has something without a doubt I promise you if you was to go there right now you're gonna find something that's gonna make you want to make a beat you guys are always asking me like where I get samples from I get messages all the time like a mirror man where can I find samples and stuff I'm telling you go to dripcord.com I like the site because they give you like when you download the pack they usually give you like uh, the wave files as well as the MIDI files that kind of helps because if you want to take that same, you know, progression or something that they're using and then apply your own sounds to it, you know, having that MIDI data, you can go in there, you can change the key, you can change this. There's so much stuff you can do with MIDI data. So I love that they give me the wave files and the MIDI data. That way I can go in there and I can do some real serious tweaking. So I already found a sample that I want to use for today. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a sample in Pro Tools and then we're just gonna get started and see what we can come up with, all right? So let's get right into it. All right, so I went ahead and I downloaded a loop pack from Dripcord. It actually came with two different loops and a MIDI file. We'll use the MIDI file for something, I don't know what, but I went ahead and I imported it into Pro Tools and I kind of copied it over, kind of, you know, guessing where I want the chorus and what I want to use for the chorus or what I want to use for the verse or whatever. So let's listen to it and see what it sounds like. All right, so that's what we got, but you know what I actually want to do to this? I want to actually make these sound a little bit more meaner, I guess. I find that when I have loops and they, they sound, like this already sounds mean, but I always like to try pitching down samples. I feel like when you pitch down a sample for whatever reason, it always feels a little mean or a little bit more sinister to me. So let's uh, use the elastic properties. Uh, settings in Pro Tools. For those of you who are not familiar with Elastic Properties, all it does is it allows you to like time stretch your audio or change the key of the audio without necessarily making it sound too robotic or messing uh, up, you know, the way the audio feels. Because sometimes, I don't know if you guys have ever tried any time stretching, but sometimes when you time stretch or use any time stretching functions, it kind of messes with the audio and it just sounds funky. I, I don't like the way it sounds sometimes, you know, depending on what you're using. But with Elastic Properties, what I found is that I can stretch the audio um, 
how I want to and it doesn't sound too bad. Like I was just in Houston and, and we were in the studio and I, I sped up a whole song. The artist was like, man, I ain't even know Pro Tools can do that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, let's, let's mess with it a little bit and let's try to tune these samples down a little bit just to make it sound a little bit meaner. So the first thing we want to do is go over here and let's change it to uh, polyphonic. Let's change both of these to polyphonic. And uh, I usually try like between three and six, like pitch it down three, uh, negative three to negative six semitones. But you want to right click whatever your audio is. Go to elastic properties. Let's do pitch shift negative three. Let's see what it sounds like with that. Hold on. Negative three. Oh, shit. That's cool. Let's go negative four. Okay, I like that. So now what we have to do, let's just go uh, where we already changed that to polyphonic. Let's go to the, the other loop and let's change that to negative four as well. All right, cool. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we just grab all of these and let's just pitch them down to negative four. These as well. So now what we just did, we just made the sample. To me, it just feels a little bit darker. Sometimes I like to make my samples feel a little bit darker. And anytime I'm doing like any time stretching or pitch shifting, I'll use Pro Tools. I'll use the Elastic Properties to do that. Now I'm using Polyphonic for this just because they're like sim sounds. If it was drums, they have another setting that you can pick, rhythmic. They also got monophonic, then very speed. And depending on what your time stretching, you're going to, you're going to want to experiment with all of those settings to see which one fits best or which one sounds best to you when you're doing that time stretching because they're all going to affect the audio a little bit different. And you know, there are settings for each of those uh, let me see. I know polyphonic. Let's see. Rhythmic. Yeah, there's a setting. Monophonic. Uh, there's nothing you can switch there. Various speed. There's nothing you can switch there. So poly, uh, polyphonic and uh, rhythmic, you know, there are options that you can kind of uh, use to kind of tweak the sample when you stretch it. But anyway, that's something you guys can experiment with when you're pulling samples in Pro Tools. Let's, uh, let's start adding some drums on top of these samples. You know we got to put some boom on that bitch. Alright, so I got the drums down, and like I said, they gave us the wave file, plus they gave us a MIDI file of the notes that they were playing so that we can, you know, choose whatever sound we want to play those same notes. So what I did is I uh, brought the MIDI files in Pro Tools. I pulled up this sound, it's called Pretty Bell. It's out of Done 2, which is just a soft synth that I have in Pro Tools. I'm not sure who makes this, but it, it sounds pretty good. It kind of reminds me of... 
I'm not gonna say it reminds me of Omnisphere as far as the sound selection, but the way that it sounds, because I feel like all these soft synths sound different, but the way it sounds, uh, it, it, it's kind of reminiscent of Omnisphere, and I like it as my go-to. It sounds like all the sounds sound rich and meaty, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, anyway, this sound is called Pretty Bell, and let's hear what it sounds like. So, like I said, it's the same exact notes that's in the uh, wave file, but we just were able to pick whatever sound we wanted to uh, play with it, you know what I'm saying, which is cool. That's another thing that I I really like about Drip Chord, that they give you that, those MIDI files, and you can, like, I can even take this and change notes and do whatever I want to do with it, you know, now that I have all the MIDI data. Let's hear it in the beat and see what it sounds like. And see, it's pretty much the same thing that the wave files were playing, but it doesn't have all those stops and different things that they did to affect the audio. So, you know, I could affect the audio. I could add those stops or, you know, uh, have time that sound or, you know, play with it and manipulate it the way I want to. So that's really cool when you have the MIDI data. But anyway, there's not a whole lot more I want to add to this beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, clean that up a little bit. And then what we're going to do is just listen to it from the top. As always, I want to know what did you guys think about the beat, man? Make sure you drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. And before you get out of here, make sure you hit that thumbs up, all right? And shout out to dripcord.com. You know, like I said, when you just need to get an idea going or you just, you know, you having a, a producer block or whatever, man, go check them out, man, because the loops there, I like I said, I always find something to work with. There hasn't been one time I went there and I couldn't find a loop. So anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until next time, Riva Dutch.